180 In ebon box when years have flown To reverently peer Wiping away the velvet dust Summers have sprinkled there To hold a letter to the light Grown tawny now with time To con the faded syllables That quickened us like wine Perhaps a flower's shriveled cheek Among its stores to find Plucked far away some morning By gallant moldering hand A curl perhaps from foreheads Our constancy forgot Perhaps an antique trinket In vanished fashion set And then to lay them quiet back And go about its care As if the little ebon box Were none of our affair 181 a wounded deer leaps highest, I've heard the hunter tell. Tis but the ecstasy of death, and then the break is still. The smitten rock that gushes, the trampled steel that springs, a cheek is always redder, just where the hectic stings. Mirth is the mail of anguish, in which it cautious arm, lest anybody spy the blood, and your hurt exclaim. 182. The sun kept stooping, stooping low. The hills to meet him rose. On his side what transaction, on their side what repose. Deeper and deeper grew the stain upon the window pane. Thicker and thicker stood the feet until the Tyrian. Was crowded dense with armies, so gay, so brigadier that I felt martial stirrings, who once the cockade wore, charged from my chimney corner, but nobody was there. 183. I met a king this afternoon. He had not on a crown indeed. A little palm-leaf hat was all, and he was barefoot, I'm afraid. But sure I am he ermine wore beneath his faded jacket's blue, and sure I am the crest he bore within that jacket's pocket, too. For twas too stately for an earl, a marquis would not go so grand. Twas possibly a czar petite, a pope, or something of that kind. If I must tell you of a horse, my freckled monarch held the rein, doubtless an estimable beast, but not at all disposed to run. And such a wagon, while I live, dare I presume to see Another such a vehicle, as then transported me. To other ragged princes his royal state partook, Doubtless the first excursion these sovereigns ever took. I question if the royal coach, round which the footmen wait, Has the significance on high of this barefoot estate. 184. If it had no pencil, would it try mine, worn now and dull, sweet, writing much to thee? If I had no word, would it make the daisy most as big as I was when it plucked me? 185. A wife at daybreak I shall be. Sunrise, hast thou a flag for me? At midnight, I am yet a maid, how short it takes to make it bride. Then, midnight, I have passed from thee unto the east and victory. Midnight, good night, I hear them call. The angels bustle in the hall. Softly, my future climbs the stair. I fumble at my childhood's prayer. So soon to be a child no more. Eternity, I'm coming, sir. Master, I've seen the face before. 186. The juggler's hat her country is, the mountain gorse, the bees. 187. Through the straight pass of suffering, the martyrs even trod, their feet upon temptation, their faces upon God. A stately shriven company, convulsion playing round, 
harmless as streaks of meteor upon a planet's bond. Their faith the everlasting troth, their expectation fair, the needle to the north degree weighed so through polar air. 188. Could I, then, shut the door, lest my beseeching face at last rejected be of her? 189. Is it true, dear Sue, are there two? I shouldn't like to come for fear of joggling him. If you could shut him up in a coffee cup, or tie him to a pin till I got in, or make him fast to Toby's fist, hissed, whist, I'd come. 190. No rose, yet felt myself a bloom, no bird, yet rode in ether. 191. Morning means milking to the farmer, dawn to the Tenerife, dice to the maid. Morning means just risk to the lover, just revelation to the beloved. Epicures date a breakfast by it, brides an apocalypse, worlds a flood. Faint going lives, their lapse from sighing, faith the experiment of our Lord. 192. Tis anguish grander than delight, tis resurrection pain. The meeting bands of smitten face we question too again. Tis transport wild as thrills the graves, when cerements let go, and creatures clad in miracle go up by two and two. 193. Speech is a prank of Parliament. Tears, a trick of the nerve, but the heart with the heaviest freight on doesn't always move. 194. Title divine is mine, the wife without the sign, acute degree conferred on me, empress of cavalry, royal all but the crown, betrothed without the swoon. God gives us women. When you hold garnet to garnet, gold to gold, born, bridled, shrouded, in a day, try victory, my husband, women say, stroking the melody, is this the way? 195. Victory comes late, and is held low to freezing lips, too wrapped with frost to take it, how sweet it would have tasted just a drop. Was God so economical? His table's spread too high for us, unless we dine on tiptoe. Crumbs fit such little mouths, cherries suit robins. The eagle's golden breakfast strangles them. God keeps his oath to sparrows, who of little love know how to starve. 196. I'll send the feather from my hat, who knows, but at the sight of that, my sovereign will relent. As trinket, worn by faded child, confronting eyes long, comforted, blisters the adamant. 197. Jesus, thy crucifix enable thee to guess the smaller size. Jesus, thy second face, mind thee in paradise of ours. 198. Baby, teach him when he makes the names. Such an one to say, on his babbling very lips, as should sound to me, were my ear as near his nest, as my thought today, as should sound. Forbid us not, some like Emily. 199. Though I get home how late, how late, so I get home, twill compensate. Better will be the ecstasy that they have done expecting me. When night descending dumb and dark, they hear my unexpected knock. Transporting must the moment be, 
brewed from decades of agony. To think just how the fire will burn, just how long cheated eyes will turn, to wonder what myself will say, and what itself will say to me, beguiles the centuries of way. 200. The rose did caper on her cheek, her bodice rose and fell, her pretty speech, like drunken men, did stagger pitiful. Her fingers fumbled at her work, her needle would not go. What ailed so smart a little maid, it puzzled me to know. Till opposite I spied a cheek that bore another rose, just opposite another speech that like the drunkard goes, a vest that like her bodice danced to the immortal tune, till those two troubled little clocks ticked softly into one.